Good morning. Good morning. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Well, what a beautiful morning. Cool temperatures. Oh, just a wonderful way to start today. So a couple of quick announcements uh, for this morning. Um, we are still planning to uh, reopen for public worship next week. However, the numbers are looking rather dismal. Um, once we received the bishop's permission, it seemed like the numbers for Sarpy County just keep going up. So we're going to be talking about some options at a meeting this afternoon. Um, we may be doing our 930 service outside on the lawn. So hang in there um, unless it's inclement weather and then we will be we, we will move in. But we will be putting some more information out there. Please watch our Facebook page, our weekly uh, electronic announcements um, for an update uh, on services next week. But we are still planning to reopen uh, and for gathering of worship. I apologize that it took a little bit longer to get that welcome back video on our website, but if you have not yet seen it, please visit our website, www.chs. Episcopal.org, and on the reopening page, there's a short, about seven-minute video that tells you what to expect when you do come to church next week. Um, also next Sunday at our 9.30 service, uh, we will be offering a blessing of backpacks for students who are going back to school uh, the week after, so if any students wish to bring their backpack, we will do a social distancing blessing and provide everyone with a um, book tag that you can put on your backpack that then says this backpack and this student were blessed. We will continue the evening Compline at 8 p.m. through the month of August. Uh, we might see some changes in the schedule beginning in September. And as we begin to gather, we are realizing some of our volunteers are not quite ready or able to return. So we have a need for volunteers on our hospitality team. Uh, if you could please call the office, uh, we will get you in contact with the right people. So uh, please look at that. Okay, birthdays and anniversaries this week. <clears throat> we have two birthdays, Ryan and Alyssa. If you would please join me in the birthday prayer found in the bulletin that you could have printed from our website. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. And anniversaries this week are Dean and Joan and Bob and Ruth. O gracious and ever-living God, look mercifully on these who have been joined together. Grant them your blessing and assist them with your grace, that with fidelity and steadfast love, they may honor and keep their promises and vows. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our service continues on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer or your printed service bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, 
protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from the book of Genesis. The same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. The man, then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob said, asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is, why is that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 17, verses 1 through 7 and 16, found in your bulletin or in the Book of Common Prayer on page 600. We'll say the psalm responsively by half verse. Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Weigh my heart, summon me by night. Melt me down, you will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have, I have heeded, heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your, your paths, paths my, my feet shall not stumble. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness. O Savior, Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand, from those who rise up against them. But at my vindication, I shall see your face. When I awake, I shall be satisfied, beholding your likeness. A reading from the book of Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ, I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God, blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces. Twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <coughs> Please be seated. Today's Gospel reading shares a story about Jesus and his ministry that is found in all four Gospel accounts. How he feeds a large number of people from only a few loaves of bread and some fish. The number of people to have been fed seems almost impossible to imagine especially when one looks back at the size of the towns and villages of the day. And then to feed them from such a small amount and for them to leave filled seems equally impossible. Maybe that's why they call this a miracle. One of the locations this miracle is supposed to have taken place is to believe to be near a small town called Tabga, a small fishing community along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, about a mile or so south of the town or city of Capernaum. Today, a church sits over the rock. It is believed that Jesus blessed the fish and the loaves. And there is a large mosaic floor rendering of the fish and loaves in a basket that rests before the altar. Capernaum, you may remember, was the home of Simon Peter and the hub of Jesus's Galilean <clears throat> ministry. When Sharon and I visited the Holy Land a few years ago, we too used this as a hub for several days of our Galilean journey. Now I know I've said this before, but when we hear the stories in scripture, we envision Jesus traveling from town to town, covering what seems to be a vast number of miles. The reality is these towns and villages were not all that far apart. Much of what we hear Jesus teach and do in Galilee happens within about a 20 to 25 mile radius of Capernaum. Not too far from Tagba, just north of Cap or excuse me, Capernaum, on the slopes of the Chorazim Plateau is where Jesus is believed to have given his sermon on the mount. Another story where a great multitude of people come together to hear what Jesus has to say. In fact, we have multiple stories throughout scripture that tell us large numbers of people 
gathered to hear Jesus as he shared with them the depth of God's love for them. God's genuine desire to restore right relationship with those God called God's own through Abraham. And what our human response to the awareness of God's love and faithfulness should look like. We often portray Jesus as this calm and gentle figure. But to draw thousands from the countryside away from their crops, their businesses, the protection of their communities, there had to have been this charismatic streak of some kind in the way he talked. While his message offers truth and hope, I wonder if at times his delivery was more like Billy Graham than Mr. Rogers. In chapter 13 of Matthew's account, the one immediately preceding today's readings, Matthew puts together this stream of parables that Jesus uses in his teaching in, in another large crowd setting. They're wonderful stories. But they seem to all make us think about them. Not get excited about what is to come. They challenge our, our mind, our rationality. Not the heart. At least as the way we read them today. Now we can only imagine what hearing Jesus speak would have been like. I just know that if I traveled the distances some of these people did to hear him speak, I would want to hear a message that moved my heart as well as my mind. I don't think we're much different today. The message or, or sermon that a preacher preaches needs to reach out and touch the heart and mind of those who hear it. I try my best, and I know there are some weeks I do better than others. But something this pandemic has helped me to realize is how much of my preaching, how much of my delivery is dependent upon seeing those who are listening. Without witnessing your reaction to what is said, I'm not always sure how my message is being heard or if I need to change direction because what I'm saying isn't connecting. That is why I'm so thankful for the, the daily interactions and weekly interactions we have on and through social media. It helps me and you and all of us stay better connected. Unfortunately, the level of our online participation seems to be shrinking a little. I'm not sure if it's the weekly messages or its delivery, or if we are somehow feeling that online worship is so different, maybe even so unfulfilling, it is hard to commit to being present in the same way as when we gather together. My hope is that as we begin to gather together, in person once again, be it inside our church building or out on the lawn, we'll find the journey to get here is worth it. Knowing that surrounded by friends and family, what we hear, what we share, somehow strengthens and encourages us in both heart and mind. So that we may bear witness to the love of God we encounter when two or more gather together in Jesus' name. Maybe that's what the people who travel to hear Jesus speak hope for also. However, there is something else that may have drawn them to Jesus. Something equally as powerful as his teaching. The miracles he is known to have performed. According to the dictionary, a miracle is a surprising and welcoming event that is not explainable by natural or scientific laws. Now to be fair, our understanding of both science and nature 
have progressed a fair bit since the days of Jesus. I'm not saying what he did was not by divine intervention or through divine wisdom, but how can we be sure? Discussing this with someone a few years ago, they said to me, we can't because we are only told what he did, not really how he did it. They went on to say that besides there's no proof beyond the writer's words that any of the events really ever happened. My response was, this is not true. <laughs> One thing every miracle in scripture has in common is that each is either preceded by or followed with prayer. And as for proof, if these stories were fictitious, if they were just simply made up to make a point, they would not have survived the scrutiny of the councils of the early church that debated every aspect of who Jesus was and what he did. And we would not have seen all those who were so willing to die for what they believed. Another piece of proof that we have is that miracles were not limited to the time of Jesus. They still happen today. Not everyone sees them as such. Some say it's just pure coincidence. Others disavow them, saying that they can be explained through nature and science. And any of those they really can't explain or can't say is a coincidence, they say never really happened. Brothers and sisters, I don't believe in coincidence. Nor do I think our understanding of nature and science somehow detracts from the reality of modern day miracles. A drug that is administered to a person that saves their life is a miracle. Because without it, the life it saved would not continue. The food a family receives at a food pantry is a miracle to those who receive it. Because without it, the hardship they would face would lead them away from hope. And the blessings we receive, known and unknown, are a miracle. And that they can lead us along a pathway to right relationship with God and one another. Next week, we are going to gather together, either here inside or out on the lawn, to witness... A miracle. Like those Jesus fed with five loaves and two fish, we are going to come together again to receive communion, knowing that what we receive will satisfy, will, will fill the body, mind, and soul. In fact, it will fill us to overflowing. That, my brothers and sisters, not the tiny piece of bread we receive or the sip of grape juice we drink, is the real miracle. Because after receiving it, we will walk away feeling strengthened and encouraged and cleansed by the body and blood of Christ that, that the bread and the wine represent. As we then look around at one another, We'll notice that our connection with one another and together with God will feel restored. Offering us a sense of peace in the midst of the chaos that surrounds us. What of those who are unable to join us for whatever reason? Even though they are not there, they are. Because when we come together... Those who believe are with us, here in our hearts, here in our minds. And we can help them to know this. When we again receive communion in community, let each of us lift up someone we know in prayer before and after that they may know even though they are not 
present. The depth of God's love surrounds them just as it does us. And that through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we are one. One with God and one with each other. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form six, found in your bulletin, or on page 392 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Lambeth Conference. In the diocese cycle of prayer, pray for St. Martha's Papillion, the Reverend Emily Schnabel, priest, Wes Agar and Nancy Houston, deacons, for the Diocese Disaster Preparedness Commission on Scouting, in the DR for the Bishop of the Diocese of the Dominican Republic, in the parish cycle of prayer, pray for the Daughters of the King, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and, and neighbors, neighbors, and, and for, for those, those who are, are alone, alone. <clears throat> for those in positions of authority including our president, Donald Trump, our governor, Pete Ricketts, the elected and appointed officials in our community, the nation, and the world. For all, for all who work, work for, for justice, justice freedom, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, hunger fear, fear, injustice, and, and oppression. oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister, minister to, to the, the sick, sick, the friendless, and, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury. For Michael, our presiding bishop. For Scott, our own bishop. For Tom, our priest and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray that you stay with and strengthen all those who are ill. Roy H., Don, Judy, Rich K., Marilyn B., Richard B., Katie, Dave S., 
Peggy Z, Van, Matt, Karen G, Candy, Martin B, Brad and Lynn, Ken, Cindy, and Julia H. Are there others? For those who serve our country at home and abroad, especially those who are deployed, Amy, are there others? We pray that you will stay with them and their families, Lord, giving them comfort and hope until they are once again reunited in peace. For those in our community who travel, that you watch over them and keep them safe especially the Richter family. Are there others? For all those with special concerns, especially the healthcare workers, Robert G, Rocky K, the Peterson family, the Kelly family, Juanita G, and the Stricker family. Are there others? Hear us, Lord. For your, for your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, and we pray that you continue to pour out your blessings on those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Ryan and Alyssa. Are there others? We pray also for those who are celebrating anniversaries this week, especially Dean and Joan and Robert and Ruth. Are there others? We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise, praise your, your name, name forever, forever and, and ever. ever. We pray for all who have died, especially for Dave K. Are there others? That they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who, who put, put their, their trust, trust in you. you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful Father. In, in your compassion, forgive, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through, Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth in the peace of your kingdom, give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord Jesus Christ, we believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion together, we pray that you come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until, by your grace, we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Our service continues in your service bulletin. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is our delight and our privilege to lift our hearts to you, our Lord and God. Because in this Eucharistic feast, you give us the pattern of our salvation. In the inadequacy of loaves and fishes, we see our paltry offerings from the gift of your creation. But just as incarnation, cross, and resurrection, you took and blessed and broke and shared our human nature in Jesus, so he took and blessed and broke and shared the loaves and fish to be an overflowing banquet of glory for your hungry people. Through the abundance of 12 baskets left over, you restore Israel's 12 tribes to service in your kingdom. And you invite us to share your feast with angels and archangels in all the company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Out of nothing, God of mercy, you made your creation. And out of slavery and wilderness, you called your chosen people. Out of flesh and blood and dust and ashes, you summon us to be your church. Send your Holy Spirit upon us now, that we may become holy, even as you are holy. Sanctify this bread and this cup, that they may transform our hearts and minds and souls and voices, as they become for us the body and blood of your blessed Son, our Lord, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of all who struggle, you wrestled with Jacob until daybreak. Open the eyes of all who fight all night to learn if their battle is indeed with you. Visit the hearts of any who limp because of an old wound to understand if that wound was part of your redemption. As you gave Jacob a new name, and as in baptism you seal each one of us with your name, as your adopted children, Bless those who search to find their true identity or to discover who you truly want them to be. Come among all who are oppressed that they may see you face to face and in you find life and hope until the day when your glory is fully revealed and you are all in all, ever one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our living Lord. Amen. 
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God, for the people of God. service bulletin or on page 366 in the book of common prayer let us pray almighty and ever living God we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of your son our Savior Jesus Christ and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your son and heirs of your eternal kingdom and now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs>